tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, we're living in exciting times. We uh, live in times of rich texture generation. And this is the summer of 2019. The workflow between substance painter, designer and alchemist has been improved dramatically. The integration into Maya. And I did a tutorial about that uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, the workflow has been improved even further now using a direct link between Substance Launcher and, for example, Alchemist. And I'll show you uh, what this is about. And uh, when we're finished with, with this, i show you again the workflow to in integrate Substance Materials into Maya. So the Substance Launcher is a free app by Algorithmic and you find it on the Substance uh, website. And um, in the current and new version, you see these icons appear here. This is, um, this is the icon for Substance Alchemist here. And um, same here, because I only have Substance Alchemist on my computer. If I had a Substance Designer and a Substance Painter here, I would see more icons here. So I could directly send these textures here to the app I'm going to use. For example, for painting on that texture, I would go to Substance Painter and uh, I'd see this icon here and send it to uh, Substance Painter then. Well, I uh, already sent some of them over to Alchemist. Uh, but I'll do it again with this texture here. I click here and then this jumps up here. Substance source sent as it's complete. It uh, has been sent to Project Alchemist. And once this is done, Alchemist opens automatically or if it's open anyway, you can just jump to it. That's what I'm doing now. Here I have the material. It lands in the Substance Source folder sent from Substance Launcher. That's what I just did. And uh, what I do now is I go to Create and I drag this over here. And it applies the texture onto this cube. Now I want a flat representation of geometry here. That's why I go to the Viewer Settings and to Mesh and to Plane. Now I have it on a plane. I see all the reflectiveness, etc. Now the strength, of course, is to build material on material on material in order to change this. This is already a stack of materials here, procedural texture, I guess. So you can uh, already use this as it is. But, uh, well, why not? These are my personal encounters here. Why not drag it over here and I get um, a different look here. You see all these dots now in blue, but below there, there's still the structure of the tire material, which I just imported through the launcher. And uh, now I, I choose this icon here, export, and then I need to export the current view. And then I get this window here. On the left side, you see the proposed or suggested materials, which are going to be or textures which are going to be exported and packed into a substance archive. The base color, the normal, which is the bump map, the roughness, etc., the metallicity, the height, which is the displacement map, ambient occlusion, etc. If uh, you want the holes here, if you take the holes seriously, you need the opacity as well. The next part here is the resolution and I think there's nothing against choosing a mid-size resolution and maybe later use the 4000 resolution so 2048 is quite good. Now I select the destination path and what I'll do is I go to my my projects the default projects here and I have already I don't know if that's there by default now a substance folder and I put it in here so I select this folder here 
and I give it a name, I call it blue dots on tire. Export it. The export process is visible here. It has already exported 7 of 10. Now it's 9 of 10 and it will be finished in just a second. In the meantime, I can call up Maya and uh, I create, uh, well, for example, a NURBS plane. Scale it up quite a bit. Press Ctrl A to get the attribute editor and have a few more patches here so I can deform them all right. So, uh, that's where I want to map my new material onto. And this is uh, the process now which has been improved dramatically. You go to the Hypershade, which is the standard starting point to create materials. And instead of, in as you would have done in, in previous times, uh, creating an AI standard surface shade and now in plugging in all the textures one after one, uh, you just drag and drop the Substance Archive, which you just downloaded, into this field here. It's right here in my Maya Projects fol folder under Substance. It's called Blue Dots on Tire. When I open this folder, I see the archive, the Blue Dots on Tire, S-B-S-A-R, and I just drag it in here. I can close this window. This node is the key to the whole solution, really, but it doesn't help us much because we cannot apply it to our plane in the modeling window. Uh, it's not renderable yet. But now comes the fun part, which is the... Uh, which is really nice. Uh, we go down here, this is the attribute editor of the Substance node, and we choose the renderer workflow from Arnold, or if you have V-Ray or RenderMan, choose V-Ray or RenderMan here, and now you, this is the magic button, create the shader network. And you will see that this is getting crowded here now, and this is basically the connection of all our textures and materials, the opacity and the color and the reflectiveness, etc. And plug it in properly into this node, which is the shader we want to apply to our plane. One of the beauties here is that um, although it looks so dramatically complex, uh, that we have only one placement node. It's that one, Place 2D Texture. In previous times, you would have had several placement nodes and if you change the placement of one of them, you need needed to change all the others. Uh, there are two more nodes which you should keep in mind here. This is the original, which we just started with, the substance node, the blue one here on, the, on this side. And uh, have a look here. This is the f uh, node f uh, highest up in the hierarchy, furthest to the right. And it has only one line coming in here. And this is for the displacement shader. That's the actual height of the of the material and uh, this is the node I want to point you to. It has a scale of one and if it's too massive, usually it comes in a very massive way here, the displacement, you just reduce this value. So uh, let us see what's coming out of this material when we apply it to our plane and then render it. So right mouse click and now we're ready to use an existing material, the AI standard surface 1. It shows up white here because we didn't click here. And now we see it applied on this surface. This is exactly the texture we had in Substance Alchemist and uh, applied one time on this surface here with all the notes about reflection, etc. Let me just briefly introduce a couple of lights and then I render this object. Now there are three lights in the scene, two area lights over here and over there, and a background light which is the sky dome which I mapped with, uh, with a photograph I took actually of beer bottles. And uh, it doesn't matter, it just gives some color uh, for the scene here. And uh, when we render it now we'll be surprised, in most times we're surprised, about the amplitude of the displacement map. As you can see here now, it's much too strict. So there's a final thought, what I pointed you to anyway. Um, 
this is the uh, highest node in the hierarchy down here is the displacement and I scale this back from 1 to 0 0.1 so I get maybe a little bit of a, a, a nicer touch here as you can see immediately how it works and maybe a 0 0.05 is the appropriate way to apply this texture raise the intensity of the lights a little bit this is the light from the right side and this is the light from the left side and you see how the reflectiveness is applied only to certain parts of that surface and uh, all I can say is dramatically improved workflow and now you can get the materials even faster using the substance launcher which transports the material directly into Alchemist, designer or painter. Bye-bye.